Good afternoon, students. This is Mr. Verzat, and today we're going to discuss what a vanishing point is. Now, some of you may already be familiar with one-point perspective. We're just going to go over it step by step and break down the individual components of it. And the most important one for perspective, if you want your work to look 3D, is a vanishing point. So what is a vanishing point? Well, let's get in and kind of look at it. So right here, we've got a drawing of some buildings, and it's incomplete on purpose because I wanted to leave some room to show you how a vanishing point works. That is a vanishing point, this little dot right over here. So if we turn this off and just kind of look at the drawing, uh, this one was done in one point perspective, one point meaning there's only one vanishing point, and we'll get into further detail on that at a later screencast. But the vanishing point's purpose is to make the drawing 3D, and it does that by sucking in all of the z-axis lines. Now that means any plane or line that recedes into the distance gets sucked in. So if you look at this, right here we got our vanishing point, we've got our x-axis, which is flat left and right, and we've got our y-axis, which is straight up and down, and then our z-axis which would be this plane right here, and these lines that are kind of slanted, and they all get sucked off into the vanishing point. And if you look at some of these other buildings over here, everything that recedes, like these little stacks right here, the side of this building, the little lines here on the side, these different stories, and same over here, anything that recedes connects to a vanishing point. Anything that goes up and down, or left and right, does not. And for me, it helped to think of the vanishing point as a giant black hole that's sucking everything in. Uh, what technically is a vanishing point? It's an imaginary dot. It doesn't exist in the world. It's just a, a tool to help you draw. It's an imaginary, imaginary dot on the horizon line. And remember, the horizon line is where your eye level is in the piece. Vanishing points basically make your drawing look 3D. Here's the cool thing. There can be more than one vanishing point, and it depends on, on what you're trying to do in your picture. One point is the most basic. Two point, in my opinion, is the easiest. Three point uh, shows you a lot, of, lot more cool stuff, and it goes all the way up to four, five, maybe even six point perspective. We'll get up to about two point perspective in design one. In design two, that's when we get into three point and mess around with some of the other stuff and so on. So think of the vanishing point as a black hole that sucks everything into it. And also, uh, for, be for beginners, we, we draw everything that's in perspective as if it was all facing the same direction. That's why I picked buildings. You know, buildings are built around streets, and streets go, usually like in an, an inner city, they go uh, you know, one direction and then perpendicular another direction, like a grid. And so when we're working on perspective, uh, we draw everything as if it's going and pointing the same way. But what happens if you have uh, an object where you've got all these cubes, but one of them might be tilted slightly? Well, um, what do you do? It would need its own vanishing point just for it. Okay? So rule of thumb is if everything is facing the same direction, uh, it all goes to the same vanishing point. If one thing is facing a different direction, then it needs its own vanishing point. So how would, how would that apply? Uh, well, if you're drawing the inside of a room and maybe your door is open, that door is out of alignment with the wall. So it would need its own vanishing point, and so on. If you were drawing a parking lot and all the cars were in their parking spaces, all of those cars would face one vanishing point. But if one of those cars was you know, parked at an angle, it would need its own vanishing point. So let's go and look at some examples here. So let's take a look at this photo. This is a, a picture of the inside of a kitchen, an interior design photo, and sure enough, it all lines up to a vanishing point. The countertops are facing the same way, the same directions that the, uh, the, white, the right wall over here is. The uh, tops of the surface of the countertop faces the same direction that the ceiling's going. The chairs are lined up with this countertop, so that means uh, they're going to be facing the same direction as the table. And so we can find our horizon line, just like we did in the previous exercise, and we can um, line up our edges, and sure enough, they all go to one vanishing point. They all line up into one area. 
and just a quick review uh, this plane right here you know we got our x or our y right here that goes up and down our y axis and our x axis that goes left and right and once again the z axis is anything that gets sucked off into the distance and sure enough it all lines up to the vanishing point let's look at some non examples uh, if you look um, this drawing here it lacks a vanishing point you know here the artist tried to draw the side of a house um, but you know it doesn't line up uh, also, any attempts for receding lines, they don't really line up to a vanishing point either. Everything is just kind of hodgepodge sitting around there. Um, take a look at the horizon line. Um, common mistake for students, and this is just an aside, is that horizon lines are where the ground is. That only applies if you're uh, like maybe in a very flat area, like maybe on the beach looking at the ocean and so on. A horizon line is actually where your eye is. So, so this house, you know, it should be placed below the horizon line, or your horizon line would be where you would be uh, standing next to the house, how tall you would be next to it, uh, rather than sitting on, right on top of where the mountain starts. So we've got uh, just a lack of vanishing points, the sides don't line up. Um, in your assignments it's important that um, all of your sides line up, that you're mindful of your x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. So let's take a look at some different pieces of artwork, how um, vanishing points are used in different ways. Uh, here's an example of what's called two-point perspective. That just means there are two vanishing points. Basically all you need to do is know that there are two receding planes and no left and right ones. So uh, usually the more vanishing points you have, the more you can see of what you're trying to draw. So when you go to two-point perspective, you see more sides to your cubes. Everything's at a bit of an angle. Two-point, in my opinion, is the easiest because out of all the perspective types, it draws itself. So uh, let's take a look and see what three-point perspective looks like. Wow! Check this drawing out. This one, the horizon line is right about up here near the top. And so remember, going back to our terminology, if there's a horizon line, um, that's your eye level depending on what you want to show off in the picture is where you put your horizon line. If you want to show off the ground, man, do a bird's eye view. Put that horizon line at the top of your paper. If you want to show off the sky, do a worm's eye view. Put it down on the bottom. And, and this artist did a bird's eye view to show off depth as if it's a deep expanse that this person could fall into. And if we look at it, uh, here's how three-point works. Um, you've got a third vanishing point that's in off the page near the bottom. And that's where all of these lines here line up with. That gives it a sense of depth or height. Here's a cool one. This is basically using two-point perspective except what they did is you know like here's one vanishing point right here in the middle you know and it's sucking in all of these planes here and if we go way over here here's another vanishing point right over here. So this area right here could be a two-point perspective picture, but look what they did. They put another vanishing point over here, and they're just following the same rules of two-point perspective to make kind of a scrolling image. So this uses more than um, more than one vanishing point, but it does it in such a way that it kind of uh, gives a sense of width instead of depth, and it's designed actually to look like this, like the background of a cartoon. Uh, you can let's zoom in right here, and if if this were to scroll, and you'd have like say your figures walking right here. It gives it that panoramic effect, like, like you're actually in the piece, which is why I love this type of perspective a lot. Usually if you're going to try this out, it would take a lot larger paper than we have, long strips of paper. But it sure gives you that panoramic sense like you're in there looking around, which is why it's so cool. It's a great way to create a world and then explore it in your art if you make really large, long strips with vanishing points that stay on the horizon line. All right, let's look and see if we've got one more. Here's, here's what's called five-point perspective. Man, that's complicated stuff. We're not going to touch that here in high school. But five-point perspective still has a horizon line right smack through the middle, and it looks like you're looking into a orb or a glass sphere. And usually there is a vanishing point directly in the center, a vanishing point way up in the top middle at 12 o'clock, a vanishing point at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock on the bottom, and... 9 o'clock, or north, south, east, and west, and in the middle. And that just makes it look like you're looking through a viewing glass. A little uh, 
orb-like lens. And uh, what this does is it captures a good 180 degrees of your surrounding area. So it gives you kind of a field of vision that we don't have naturally. So uh, that is how vanishing points work. Let's just review really quick. Vanishing points sit on the horizon line. Vanishing points suck in all of the receding lines and planes. And your vanishing point is responsible for giving depth to your piece. So, that is that, and I look forward to seeing everybody in class. Have a good rest of the day.